sorry I turned it, <laughs> turned it on and forgot to look up <laughs> uh, I've been going through the book of first Corinthians and um, I've taken you through several spots in first Corinthians and and it certainly hasn't been an exhaustive study of first Corinthians in fact I don't think I even started until about the eighth chapter um, but as I've been studying personally through first Corinthians um, I've come to the chapter of chapter 13 everybody knows first Corinthians 13 is the love chapter and yet it's a chapter that while we've all heard it, we've heard it read at weddings, I, I do parts of it at every wedding I do just about, um, we forget just how important it really is. I really don't think there's anything more powerful on this earth, and I know that sounds corny to say it, but I believe it with all my heart. I don't believe there's anything more powerful on this earth than the power of love. Because Corinthians 13 teaches us that love can endure anything. Back when Babe Ruth was nearing the end of his career, he was playing for Boston. And he wasn't as agile as he had been as a younger man, and he was making a lot of errors. And in this one particular game, it was, it was he was having a terrible game. They were playing Cincinnati, and... He made so many errors that he, through his errors, cost Boston, or yeah, cost Boston five runs. And he's walking off the field with his head hanging down, and uh, the crowd begins to boo him. Now, Babe Ruth, regardless of what he had done in that game, Babe Ruth is, con is still considered one of the greatest players that has ever played the game has hit, you know, held the record for, for home runs I don't know how long, um, was just, I mean, he was the ambassador of baseball. They called him the Sultan of Swat. He's walking off the field and everybody is booing him. Everybody's forgot everything that he has meant to baseball. And this little boy jumps over the fence and he runs out onto the field with tears streaming down his face. And he says, he, he runs up and he grabs Babe Ruth by the leg and he hugs him and looks up at him with tears running down his face. And Babe Ruth stoops down and smi he lays down his glove and he picks up the little boy and smiles at him and gives him a hug. And in that moment, the crowd was hushed. Everybody was silent because in that moment, they didn't see Babe Ruth, the great baseball player. They didn't see Babe Ruth, the aging baseball player that was making a lot of errors and probably shouldn't still be playing the game. They didn't see Babe Ruth, the baseball player. They saw the power of love. They saw a man who cared about a little boy enough that was so upset that he ran out on the field to embrace his hero and protect his hero that he picked him up and he hugged him and he said, it's going to be okay. Love endures all things. <laughs> on the other side of that, I read about a little girl who was playing at having a wedding with all of her stuffed animals. And she was she was playing the part of the minister saying the vows or something like that. Anyhow, it came time to do the vows and instead of doing wedding vows, she said, repeat after me. And as the wedding vows, she said, you have the right to remain silent. If you give up the right to remain silent, anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney. If you give up that right, or if you can't afford an attorney, one will be provided for you. You may now kiss the bride. <laughs> Unfortunately, that has become the interpretation of love in today's society in a lot of instances, and sadly, in a lot of marriages. We forget 
what love really is about. We forget what love really represents. And sadly, we lay aside the power of love out of selfish reasons. Listen to 1 Corinthians 13, and I'm going to read this from the New Living Translation. Um, let me just read it to you. I know you've heard it a dozen times. That's why I'm not reading it out of the New King James, because you've heard it out of that a gazillion times. But let me read it from here. It says, If I could speak all the languages of earth and angels, but didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. Please hear that. If I didn't love, no matter how brilliant I am, it's useless. It's empty. If I had the gift of prophecy, and if I understood all of God's secret plans and possessed all knowledge, and if I had I had such faith that I could move mountains but didn't love others, it would be nothing. If I gave everything I have to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it. But if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. Love does not demand its own way. It is not irritable. It keeps no record of wrongs. Of being, it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever truth wins out. Love never gives up. It never loses faith. It is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance prophecy and speaking in known in unknown languages and special knowledge will become useless but love will last forever now knowledge is partial and incomplete and even the gift of prophecy reveals only part of the whole picture but when the time of perfection comes these partial things will become useless when I was a child, I spoke and thought and reasoned as a child. But when I grew up, I put away childish things. Now we see things imperfectly, like puzzling reflections in a mirror. But then we will see everything perfectly and clearly. That's talking about when we're in heaven. All that I know now is partial and incomplete. But then in heaven, I will know everything completely just as God now knows me completely. And then the classic 13th verse. Three things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. You know, we have choices in life. We can choose to be, we can choose to love. And that means understanding. It means being patient. It means uh, just uh, sometimes biting the bullet and taking the hit ourselves. Or we can continue to pick away at the people around us that we say we love. At one point uh, in time, one of the great space shuttles was grounded because a little woodpecker had found out that they liked pecking the foam insulation on the fuel cells and they had pecked holes in that insulation and they they found out that that they had done it well without that insulation on the big fuel cells the cells would ice up when they filled them with fuel because the fuel was was sub-zero temperature and the the cells would ice up on the outside without that insulation and then the uh, when the when the ship was taking off, that ice could break loose and damage the shell, all because this little tiny woodpecker kept was pecking away at something that looked like it was like there's no way that little tiny bird could hurt this gigantic ship, but it did. You may think that your marriage or your friendship or your relationships are impossible to hurt but you keep picking away at them long enough instead of showing the kind of love that God intends you to show 
and you will damage it and you will hurt it. You will cause irreparable damage that cannot easily be fixed. Today you have choices. That choice is do I love or do I pick? Do I ignore the booze of the world and show love to a little child, giving a, sacrificing my own personal hurts to be a champion for somebody else? Or do I just hang my head, push the little boy aside, and keep walking? Do I treat my spouse more as though we were in a prison sentence together or as though we have something that's very important and very special and that I need to sacrifice myself for. It's your choice today. You decide. Because you see, love is not feelings. All of those things that are listed in 1 Corinthians 13, those are not about feelings. Those are about choices we make. You choose to love somebody. Good feelings go along with it. But sometimes you love even through the booze. Think about it today as you go through your day. I will talk to you tomorrow. Hope you have a wonderful day. If you like this, hit subscribe if you're watching it on YouTube or hit share if you're watching it on Facebook. Share it with the people around you and, and maybe we can encourage others to be a little more loving today. God bless you. I will talk to you tomorrow.